Cauliflower is good for your body, but probably not good for your watercolor painting, especially when it's not intentional. So today I want to share with you what caused it, how to avoid it, and most importantly, how to fix it. This is going to be a very important video, so let's get started. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. So what causes cauliflower edges? Well, it happens when the mixtures on your brush has more moisture and water than your paper. It is usually at the damp stage of your wash. Depending on the weather and the humidity of your environment and the paper that you use, your painting will turn from moist to damp at a different rate. A good way to check is to look at your painting for sheens and beads. If there's no bead and the sheen is very weak, you need to be careful because the painting is starting to become damp. While it is possible to paint on it, your mixture needs to be very dry. Because in this stage, the paper is going to be very thirsty. The fibers on the paper will absorb any extra water you put on it. And when that happens, it pushes the paints that are still settling on your paper, and that creates the cauliflower edges. And if you paint tilted like me, your wash can be a little bit more wet and moist in the bottom, and drier and damp on the top. So be very careful about that. Now, not all cauliflower edges are bad. There are times you can use that create interesting textures such as grasses, foliages, and stuff. There are also artists who use cauliflower edges as a background element such as Yuko Nagayama. She uses those effects beautifully in her painting. So you never know, it might help your painting. So avoiding cauliflower edges is very simple. Don't paint on a damp surface unless you are absolutely sure the mixture on your brush is drier than the paper. Over the years, I started to develop a mental alarm bell in my head whenever I put down a wet wash. I start to pay attention to the stage of wetness around 3 minutes or so. That's typically how long it takes from a wet wash to a damp layer. At that time, I will either need to spray some mist on the painting to keep the wash moist a little bit longer, or I need to wrap up my wet on wet work and leave it be. If I'm not sure, I will most likely just leave it to dry. Lastly, how do you fix cauliflower edges? Well, like everything else in watercolor, if it is dry, then there's no way to fix it. But before you throw away your painting, see where those edges occur. If they are in the area that you are going to paint darker values on it, then it doesn't really matter since you are going to cover them up anyways. But if it is not, then the wash is not completely dry yet. You can paint over the whole shape again. What this will do is that it will cover the damp wash completely with a wetter mixture and allow the paper to redistribute the wash water to the entire shape that you are painting. That will give the paint a second chance to resettle on your painting, which eliminates the cauliflower edges. I use this technique many times when I see cauliflower edges about to form, and that saved my paintings. So let me do a quick demo to show you on paper so you can understand it clearly. Before we start, if you find my video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. Ring the bell icon so you will get notification for my future videos. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so here I am. I'm using a cheaper paper. This is from Mozart, but nevertheless, it should work just the same. So what I'm going to do right now is to just create a simple wash, a simple blue shade wash. Okay, so let's say something like that. Let me add just a little bit more paint so it shows up a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so it's a nice clean wash right here. Okay, my paper is a little bit tilted so you see the bead gathered down here. Okay, now what I can do is I can add more color to it. Wash is still quite wet. So I can do something like that. I can add some other color. Let me add a little bit of alizarin crimson to make it a little bit more purple and such. And that's all fine. I can extend the wash and things like that. Okay, this is all fine and good. So most of the time when I lay down a wash like this, I will spend a little bit of time and start to do some wet on to wet work. Right, so here if I add some yellow, I can actually make it 
a little bit greener or things like that a little bit now after a minute or two the water started to flow down that's why you see a bunch of beet gather here it's quite watery i can continue to wash down or something like that that being said all the paint up there are starting to settle down now when i check the light you can see a little bit of sheen okay but the reflection the amount of sheen down here is a lot more than what's up there because what's up there is starting to settle now at this point if you want to do it on to wet to the drier area you need to be very very careful for example i'm just going to grab paint okay not water just paint no water here and i just do that okay and you can still see that it do a little bit wet onto wet and it spread out quite nicely got this nice soft texture but i am using a very dry mixture this is the mixture that i am painting on the dry surface but painting on the moist almost damp surface you can get some very nice soft edge but what happened if i have a mixture that mix with a little bit of water yeah i'll just use blue as well but this time i add some water to it okay yeah now you can start to see the difference it is some more paint here and so on okay now i use a very watery mixture on it and you can see what happened let me zoom in and show you now this part where i use more just the paint with no water you can see this nice soft shape but in this part where i use more watery mixture on this surface that's already damp this is what's going to happen it start to create these cauliflower edges and it washes off some of the paint that's already underneath here and you can see that it creates this unpleasant cauliflower edges okay so how do we deal with cauliflower edge Okay, let's try to create cauliflower edge again on purpose. So we just create a fresh new wash, fresh new shape. Okay, and we're doing some wet on to wet work as always. Some um, well, there's a crimson here or something. Uh, maybe a little bit of orange to make some sort of a warm gray color. So things like that and maybe you want to add a little bit more blue color here wash is still quite moist so we can work on it okay about a minute and a half has passed we still see some sheen on it but i think we can try to purposefully create some cauliflower edges so let me add a sort of a watery mixture here okay and this is the part that you should spot cauliflower edges. If any point of your painting, you do some wash on top and you start to see the paint starting to spread out, you should know that you are creating cauliflower edges and now is the time you can try to fix it. Now, how do I fix it? Okay, well, the way to fix it is to redo again, redo this whole wash again. So hopefully it's not a huge area, but what we can do is let me bring a big brush and grab some more paint and just do this whole darn area again just paint over this area like it was dry paper and look cauliflower edges is gone okay so what happened? So what happened is that because the wetness on your wash was uneven, it was very wet in the center while everywhere else around it is a little bit more damp. So it's starting to create cauliflower edges. So what happened is when you lay a new wash on top, before it is dry, you redistribute the water on this wash. So the cauliflower edge will be gone you give it a second chance for you to work on it. Okay, so here's a bonus painting video I want to share with you. And in this demo, you will see that one of the layer that I'm painting creates a cauliflower edges and how I remedy that. 
So this scene is from Pearl Harbor, and during that morning, I seen the lighting looks great on this ship. I took a photo and I decided to paint it a few weeks ago. I love the contrast of the light and the dark, the white of the structure on the building, and the black color of the hull of the ship. So I did a very simple drawing for the painting. Now I eyeball most of the perspective, but it is important to still draw a believable structure. So I did recompose the image a little bit by cropping it, so that will make the boat a bit bigger. So here I pre-wet the sky because I want some of those nice white fluffy clouds. And by pre-wetting it, when I put down the color of the sky, it will create some nice soft shapes. That being said, you need to make sure your mixture is nice and thick and saturated. Because when you paint on a wet paper, you need to take into the account that there are waters on your painting surface. So when you put down a mixture, the water on the paper is going to dilute your mixture. So if your mixture is too wet, when you paint on a wet surface, it's going to get very washed out. And when it's dry, it's going to fade back into pretty much nothing. So make sure you compensate for that. So after painting the color of the sky, I added a little bit of a neutral gray and a little bit of cool gray in the cloud just to add some volume. That makes the cloud looking nice and fluffy and volumetric. And after I'm done with the dark part of the cloud, I connect that down to the black hull of the ship, just to avoid some awkward white if I try to paint around it. And since the hull of the ship is going to be much darker, it doesn't really matter. I can just connect the shape over. And you can see there's bead gather underneath. And if I try to use those bead to continue the shape, I will be able to make a nice clean wash. And I am not in rush to make this color dark because it is just the first wash. So just continue on to the ocean surface. The most important thing for the first wash is to get a nice clean consistent wash. So before the ocean surface is dry, I paint some wet onto wet, add a little bit of the soft ripples with a darker, thicker mixture. And you need to make sure your mixture is nice and dry and thick so those shapes will stay in the wet wash. It will still be a soft shape, but it will remain. And the wash is pretty much dry, so I started to add some red colors on the painting. These small red colors are very important because that give this painting a little bit more punches in terms of the color. Adding some more red. And now I start to paint the shadow side of the boat, which is also the middle value of this painting. And just by adding a little bit of the dark side, you get to see the structure of the boat start to come out. So I was at Bend, Oregon, given workshop to quite a few wonderful students. And one of the things that I see that's very common with the students is that they dab a lot. And that's usually not a good habit to have. Because if you keep dabbing and paint over the same area over and over again, you are disturbing the wash, you're disturbing the paint, and it will not able to settle down. And that's going to result in a wash that's not so clean looking. And a lot of time, that's the reason why some students' colors came out looking muddy. Some students' painting came out looking a little bit dirty. It's not because of the color they use, but because of the brushstroke they are painting. So paint over it at once and leave it be. So now I'm painting the black hull of the ship. Now I know that this wash is not going to be dark enough. 
but I know that I will be able to paint over that later after this wash is dry. So the purpose of this wash is just to lay down that middle value shape. And when that's dry enough, I will be able to add more dark value to it. Now that being said, I always try to work on it a little bit when I do wet. And in this case, I want to have a soft transition. So I decided to try to paint the dark value while it is still wet. Now the side is already dry. And during that time, I'm thinking that I want a soft transition. So I add a little bit of water, trying to transition that dark value over. However, what that does is creating a cauliflower edge. And when I see that, I know that I have to fix that before it is dry. And because it is not completely dry yet, I can just paint over the whole scene and make that wash a little bit more consistent. So after painting over the shape again, the cauliflower edge is gone and I was able to transition it from dark medium value to middle value. And I also decided to just leave it alone and let the paint settle because I know after it is dry, I can paint a darker layer on top. So I paint the middle value of the building on the side, trying to get the light coming out. And those are a little bit smaller shape. So I just paint it once and I leave it. And those shapes dry much cleaner. So here I just add a little bit of the middle value shapes here and there to suggest the buildings and the structure and things like that. And I try to continue my wash down. So I'm adding a dark color for the dock. And again, try to use the minimum amount of strokes to finish that shape. And there's some red color underneath, so I try to do that wet onto wet because I want to connect them. A bit of darker details on that wall of the dock. Painting these wet onto wet will make those details look a little bit more soft and that will blend into the shape a little bit better as well. And I know that when it is dry, it's going to blend in even better. So now I paint the second layer of the ocean surface just to add a little bit more variation in value. Some part of the ocean reflecting the white clouds so they're a little bit lighter and some a little bit darker. So painting another layer on top and that will make the water look a little bit more interesting. Now I'm checking if the ship hull is completely dry yet. Apparently still a little bit moist. So I'm waiting for it to be completely dry. And in the meanwhile, I start to work on some other areas, giving it a little bit of details here and there. So the lamp post, antenna, whatever, that just makes the painting looks a little bit more interesting. Adding some hints of detail of the windows. And now I believe it is dark enough. After there's no sheen, after when I touch it, it feels about the same as the dry paper. So I come back with a much thicker black mixture. I add just a tiny little bit of water so that the paint can flow a little bit but mostly just very dry. So now you can see after adding that very dark mixture, all the inconsistency on the previous layer got covered up. So that goes back to what I mentioned earlier in this video. Sometimes when you see the cauliflower edges, well, the wash is not as consistency as you like it to be. See if it's going to be covered by darker value. If that is the case, then there's no need to worry too much.
because it's going to get covered up. Now I'm just starting to paint a little bit more details. And with that dark layer in, the painting is pretty much finished. Just adding a little bit more dark on the left of the boat and we are finished. I hope this demo is helpful, especially if you have problem with cauliflower edges and inconsistent washes. Just pay attention to your painting and before it is dry, you're always able to manipulate it and just repaint the whole scene if you have to. There you have it, I hope this is helpful for you. It all comes down to how well you understand the property of watercolor. The more familiar you are with it, the more you can work with it and create the result you want. That's it for today's video. Comment below and let me know if you try this technique and if it works for you. And also let me know if you have any other struggle with your watercolor. I can't believe we are almost halfway through 2023. I hope you have a great year so far. Take care and I will see you next time.